Yeah. So yeah, we're named after uh, Johnny, Johnny Burnett's Burnett song. Yeah. Which is a lot better than saying, yeah, we like the venue. We like the party. <laughs> yeah. The chicken wings, that's what got me. <laughs> <laughs> Six, the channel dedicated to the local Las Vegas music scene and the people that make it, like these guys and me. I'm Josh, and obviously, I'm not in my kitchen, I'm in theirs. So, I don't know too much about this band, because they made it hard to find out. Dig, dig. We're, we're, we're hiding away. Yeah. Yeah. On purpose. We're but, the biggest little secret, I right. guess. Uh, sharing a name with a popular local venue, <laughs> and uh, friends of the Red Seduction, who are friends of the channel, please welcome to the channel, The Hideaway. Say hi, guys. Hey guys, how's it going? What's happening? Now, if somebody's watching this and they don't know who you are, thank you very much. But also, go ahead and introduce yourselves. Tell them what you do in the band. I'm Antonio, I play bass. I am George. I play guitar, and I'm the singer. Randy, play drums. I'm Josh. Yeah. I'm the host. It's the host. Yeah. <laughs> so, what I'd like to do is talk a little bit about your musical history. So. How long have you been playing music individually? Whoever wants to start. I'll make it easy. Uh, always wanted to play music. Never really had the time. Um, my dad was really into music. Uh, as a kid, he was always playing music, always pushed me uh, any avenue he wanted that I wanted to go. And he brought me a second hand, a piano. He bought me a guitar that was missing a string. He just, anything. He gave me the avenue, but I never took it. Mm -hmm. When he was gone because I lost him to cancer, one day it hit me and go, wait a minute, he was giving me the tools, but I was just being a kid and not caring. And out of nowhere, it just, the bug hit me. Bought an upright bass, never looked back. So how old were you when you started that? Well, I was, my son was born, so 14 years ago. I picked up the upright bass, mm -hmm. wanted to play, went on YouTube, because you can learn everything on YouTube. <laughs> and uh, here I am. Uh, I, learned, I started to play bass on the upright. Okay. And then from there on, I learned to turn the bass sideways, <laughs> and then I picked <laughs> up the electric bass. So you yes. went backwards of most I went bass backwards. Players. Normally people go the other way around. And uh, I started playing electric bass, yeah. and from there on, I got bit again with the electric bass. Mm -hmm. And then I met George, and from there on it was... It's a different skill set on the, on the sideways bass. It's, it is. It's you know, you, the fingering and everything. And the way you set it up, it's much easier to just plug instead of having to accommodate to the acoustics of the uprights. Mm -hmm. I felt like I was cheating because I would just plug in and play instead of having to do like a sound check and right. make sure I didn't get any feedback. So I felt it was easier and I needed a break from the upright and I met George perfect time. Oh yeah, and especially uh, I used to front a cover band many years ago for many years and the bass player was always the last one to show up and always the first one ready to go. Yeah. Because he'd literally just be like, plug, plug, plug. <laughs> Let's do this. Ready? Correct. <laughs> What's yeah. first? <laughs> and I, 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 I was a singer, so I actually, I kind of, but I also brought all the sound gear. <laughs> so I didn't quite have the, the luxury of being, yeah. here's my microphone, you know. Nobody carried your mic in? Did yeah. You know, plug in for you? No, no, no. Yeah. Um, who's next? I guess me. Um, I, I guess it's tales all this time. I started playing music because of church. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people start that way. Um, I was... 12 when I picked up the actually the, the bass and I played for a couple of years that was my first love and then I got into drums and keyboard and when I was 16 I found the guitar and never looked back nice so you you a lot of people start on guitar and kind of like me my first instrument well really it was piano at seven years old because you know that's what you See, do I had a little Casio yeah that's yeah. what you do you, you tell your kid you take your piano lessons but um no, I, I started on guitar and eventually, like I'm just now getting into drums and, and uh, bass and other things because, like you said, it's just like, well, I have it. Correct. You know, it was, it was seen a Room 6 video where they perform in, up in Room 6. I have a guitar wall and I have electronic drums and I have an electronic piano and I've got a bass and it's like most of my time is spent sitting in front of the computer with my back to those things editing. Yeah. <laughs> and, and it, which is why I made a... Uh, uh, shameless plug time. I made a line of merch uh, my store, Room Six Dot Shop, that is make music, not excuses. Mm -hmm. And I almost wore the hat today, but I, it's more for me. <laughs> it's just like you know 
you still can do that. Even if you don't have a show or you don't have, you know, you're not working on a new song or whatever, you can still go get your yayas out, as the Stones would say. <laughs> and uh, unfortunately, it doesn't have as much as it, as it should, probably. But how about you? Um, I'm a drummer first and foremost, mm -hmm. uh, but I've been playing music since like uh, junior high. Uh, Southern California mainly played in uh, punk bands for many years, just backyard scene and stuff. Um, but my mate, uh, you know, George and stuff, I seen them play at, uh, I think it was a uh, rebar. rebar. And uh, I don't think we were friends with the, the, your old drummer. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, that guy, just when I first seen him playing, you know, I, I, I was in, I hadn't played drums for like 10 years. And uh, I was just watching them play, and it was just two guitar players at that time. And I was just like watching me and listening to the music because, you know, I caught the vibe, the rockabilly-ish and, mm -hmm. and the garage and the surfing. I was like, all right, that's cool, you know? And I was just like, damn, looking at the drummer, I was just <laughs> like, fuck, this guy's not doing this guy's justice, <laughs> you know? I could be better. And then, uh, yeah, then after, you know, they're playing at Evil Pie and my other band, we were playing at a Bunkhouse and I came over watching him. He's like, oh, my drummer's gone. And I was just like, I'll come back and play drums for this band, so... You know, that was just definitely just watching that. I, I just heard like, like man, I, I just had all kinds of little ideas in my head already. I was like, hmm. I can do this, I can do that. And and that's basically, you know, what we are now. And, nice. and that's, uh, you know, we got yeah. that little mixture of uh, different, you know, influences and stuff like that. That's nice. So Usually you got to go track down a drummer. And get no, we, we got <laughs> lucky. And, and the thing is, um, yeah, when we first started, it was two guitar players, me and my friend George. And we had this drummer this older man and he was always grouchy and then um he ended up leaving the band after one show and we're like whatever <laughs> so but we had a gig at um evil pie so we're like we got this and he showed up and uh, the thing is like we've always had people say hey i see you don't have a bass player let me play bass or hey you don't have this let me do this and we're like yeah sure it, it never goes anywhere so he was like, hey, I want to play drums. And we're like, yeah, okay, yeah, sure, whatever, you know. But literally the next day, he sent me a picture like, hey, I got a drum kit. I'm like, oh, shit, he's for real, <laughs> you know. And then we sent him the songs, and it just started from there. But, yeah, he definitely brought a dynamic that it's literally now the hideaway. Like, he laid that foundation, I would say, with his mm -hmm. drumming tracks, yeah. Nice. Um, moving from that to influences, what's the earliest musical influence? What do you remember, like, that was the moment of, I want to do that, or you know, I want to learn to play this instrument or whatever. Well, with me, I'll be honest. Uh, growing up in a Spanish Salvadorian home, uh -huh. cumbias, cumbias, mm -hmm. that that cumbia music from your Saturday mornings, mom cleaning the house already, or even those Friday nights parties. You know, you would hear as a kid that same beat that you hear in every cumbia song. And it gets repetitive, but it's instilled in, and mm -hmm. you just hear it, hear it. And then from there on, you start listening to a lot of uh, Spanish music. For me, it was Spanish music as a kid because my parents were always blasting music, especially my dad when he was drunk. You know, I mean, rest in peace. He, uh, he loved his music, but he, um, he liked the cumbias and he liked a lot of the older, um, I would say not rock and roll, but just early Spanish influence, like your Vicente Fernandez or even your uh, Pedro Infante. And I see him singing to himself and you know, what is he doing as a kid? You don't understand it until you get to your age and then the lyrics means, they mean something to you. Mm -hmm. You go, oh, I get it. So for me, that was it. Growing in Southern California, um, that was my introduction to music. And then from there on, now I, I'm old enough to make my own decisions. Yeah. I can turn the dial or download whatever and I can see what I like. And man, I'm all over the place now, you know? Yeah, a lot of my college years, was me listening to music during, you know, like not a class time or not a work time and figuring out, oh, oh, that's what that means. Or, yeah. you know, oh, he's, <laughs> that's what they're singing about. And, it, oh, they were banging. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Behind the bush. You know, yes. Like, that's what that meant. So, yeah, no, I totally. Yeah. yeah. It, um, but a lot of it was just like, no wonder my mom didn't want me to hear this, you know. <laughs> Who's up? I, I guess me. It's it's weird because when I was twelve and I was playing the bass, I was playing a lot of corridos actually, mm -hmm. and so I'm really good at playing mariachi and corrido music. Um, but then I discovered uh, the Chili Peppers. And, uh, yeah, right. But what's, then, what's on there? RHCP. It's okay. Blurry and old. 
But um, I honestly thought like it was a Japanese. Like a 20-year-old <laughs> tattoo. <laughs> no, but the thing, uh, it's not so much as the band itself, but as John Frusciante, that's a guitar player. I mean, going from the early days with like the funk and punk mm -hmm. to the more poppy modern stuff, it's just, it motivated me to play guitar. I, I don't play like they do. I play a completely different style, but it's just more of what got me going and what inspires me. So yeah. Well, that band with, you know, with the rhythm section, with doing so much of the heavy lifting. Yes. The whoever's playing guitar at the time is a lot of times overshadowed. Yes. And so they're they're playing like John. He plays just enough. Mm -hmm. You know. And and so you're like, if you, I agree. I'm not the hugest fan of Red Hot Chili Peppers, just because I used to work in retail. Oh, and, you, <laughs> you, like, you, California uh, Oh my God. Oh, yeah. Right. Yes. And so eventually you're like, yeah, I get it. I get it. But. Looking back through their catalog, you can definitely see there's a progression. There's also the guitarist is always the odd man out, it seems like, trying to find his place. Yeah, it's, it's his style that motivates me because he's driven. I'm like, why is he driven? What inspires him? What can I get from it? And mm -hmm. that's what pushes me. So, yeah. Well, next. <laughs> um, shoot, man. My stuff is uh, from my older sister listening to, like, Cure and oh, wow. Ramones and stuff. So, that was really... You know, I had the same influence, the same thing. My parents listened to, yeah. you know, Spanish music. But what actually wanted me to, like, play mm -hmm. was actually just, you know, like, Ramones, Sex Pistols, those early just stuff, that tapes that I got. And that was always been my influences. And Keywords and with it, tapes. Yeah, tapes. Because hey, yes. it was tapes. Like that. <laughs> yes. Tracks. Tapes. See, kids. <laughs> tapes. No, at that time, I, I'll tell you the tape thing, what I used to do. So, Rodney on the Rock was, you know, mm -hmm. from Southern California. So, and whatever radio station, uh, KPCC, you know, uh, same thing, the local Pasadena radio station that would play alternative music. Mm -hmm. So it was just like, you put a tape in, you're just listening, and you're like, wait, you wait, you record it, boom. Yeah. And then you wait, you wait. And no. sometimes even like Ronnie and Rock, man, I used to have, you know, I know they started releasing that, but yeah, I had tapes of just mm -hmm. his whole show, just boom, because that's where you heard the music. Play and, you know, uh, yeah. you would hear, the, you could try to get the song right in time, but you would miss it, so yeah. you get like the <laughs> beginning of a song, Wait, let, me tell you something. let me tell you something. I just recently interviewed Josh Coots, who runs uh, Mixtape Records. And it reminded me, like, Mixtape, when someone made you a mixtape, well, they, they, they care. They care. Because a lot of work went into that. There was, there was no, like, oh, no, I got a little bit of the commercial or whatever. The next song, I'm going to cut that out. You, no. no. You had to be perfect. And, and that that is, so that's how we, like, in, in high school, you know, which for me was uh, early 90s, was that um, that's how we got music, like, from different people that would have a mixtape. Mm -hmm. So it would be, like, I remember having like Dead Kennedys, the Beastie Boys, the early Beastie Boys, the punk Beastie Boys. Be before they played instruments. That. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and stuff just like that. And that's how you pass it around. So I found one. I, I don't even sure. I think it was at my mom's house. But yeah, I found a mix and I was just like, oh, shoot, this is crazy. Like, this was a tape. But watching the, it was just listening to that music and same thing, you know, I went to a backyard show and I watched, you know, band play and I was just like, that <laughs> and then that's it me and my we were in a band which is funny me and my friends we were in a band before we even had any <laughs> friends that we play it. we're like we're in a band oh and you then, did the nirvana model so yeah. <laughs> and then by that point it was just like i remember it was just i got my first drum set was yeah summer seventh grade mm -hmm. and then from right there on that's it you know i have been playing just backyard since the best thing i ever did for myself uh it, when i was in a band was work at a pawn shop because things would come out for sale oh, and I'd be like, hey Ace boss, yeah, yeah how much, what's my price? Plus and, this and, and also as I was the assistant uh, store manager and every year we did inventory and there was always something that wasn't, it, for whatever reason, <laughs> previous man management and I got speakers that are tall as you and me uh -huh. and I got them like free because they weren't in the inventory. He's like, fuck it, take them. He's like, take them. Like, all right. Yeah. I, so a lot of the stuff you see in my uh, my music room is from that those years where it was just like, I can't pass it up. Maybe you didn't have the money, but you can't pass it up when you get, you know, like a half stack, an amp head, Marshall amp head, uh, a lead MOSFET, which is fairly yeah, old. That's yes. old. Yeah, yeah. And, and I, I, I just had to pay for the amp head, and it was like a couple hundred bucks. I was just yeah. like, now, you know. So even though it's currently not working right I'm, I'm not getting rid of it you know? yeah and my wife told me it's like I, I, I at one point you reach a point you're like you know I'm not using it I probably should sell it <laughs> you know and she's like the second you sell it something's gonna come up and you're gonna need it 
Yeah. And you're I still gonna have to buy a newer one, better yeah. one. <laughs> this is the same woman that told that begged me not to uh, when we first moved here not to make music in my career ah. because I'd be miserable because <laughs> it's oversaturated and blah blah. We all know the reasons. Yeah, yeah. And to be to be fair, she's right. And now I, <laughs> I I can afford to you know go out to shows and you know review live shows and and be like you know what yeah let me have another round and. I, it's it, it it's my piece of advice to, be, to new musicians, especially, is don't count on music to pay your bills. Oh yeah, you know this this man's signing for a house today. Yeah, no, did yeah. music get you there? Fortunately, no. Good old two jobs. <laughs> That's right. Hard work. Two yes. Jobs. You know, I with these guys, they know um, music is my outlet. It's yeah. uh, what I look forward to. Um, it's not. I don't make it a, like a chore. I don't make it a, a task that you have to be there. Mm -hmm. you know, we all have jobs. We all have our commitments. But the music becomes like our outlet. So we look forward to it. We're not burnt out as far as you have to be there. You've got to do these gigs. You've got to play these shows. Because if you don't, then you're short on money. And uh, unfortunately, once you put yourself in that position, mm -hmm. you're kind of stuck. Which, so, yeah, which yeah. is why I have nothing but respect for bands like Crimson Riot. That, that they're paying the bills with music. Yeah. 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 Because they also have Rocks Again Project. You know, they do the cover, that's their day job, they call it. They do the cover gigs that we all know and love. <laughs> you know, playing the same songs for four hours. Yeah. But then they also get to go, we're a punk band, and we get to go have fun and to go on tour and play with amazing, you know. And, see, and, that's, and that's fun, but you know how hard it is to find those three, four, or five individuals that mm -hmm. have the same mindset. Yeah. It is hard. Everybody in town, and I tell this to everybody, everybody's a musician. But when it all <laughs> boils down to it, and the day you got to meet for practice, for a show, for this, they can't show up. So what good is it that you're a awesome guitar player, bass player, drummer, but you can't show up to practice? So then at that point, then you're not a musician. Yeah. Uh, a couple nights ago, I was at Vant, and uh, I went there to see a band called Immortal Guardian. It was a metal show, like metal, metal. These guys put on spectacle. The singer was singing into a skull with light-up eyes <laughs> oh, wow. that he had on the microphone. Yeah, yeah. And just, it was like rock, it was rock opera theater. It was amazing. And it turns out two of the guys live here. One guy lives in Montreal. One guy lives in Texas. And they just do their homework. And then when they have shows, uh -huh. like so, they book shows and show up. I think like a day or two ahead, just to run, run through the ins and outs, as they say. Yeah. And I have not like that is oh, yeah. respect because there was never a drop moment. There was never a moment where like a wrong note or or they were fighting through a song. <laughs> yeah. And I was just like, that's I couldn't do that. I, I got to live in the same town. I I have to you know. We have to rehearse at least once a week, because otherwise, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, that's making yeah. it happen right there. Yeah, and I think that's also a, a new generation <coughs> of musicians now, because the uh, COVID, access yeah. access to internet to just downloads and hey, send me music, it's way easier than back in the day. Yeah. Yeah, back in the day, that you like had to be able, able to do that, right? And oh now, yeah, yeah. Sure you maybe can. you got a tape. Yeah, <laughs> maybe you got a tape and you worked on your part, but you still had to rehearse together. Correct. Yeah. Um, there's certain cues when you're on stage. You yeah. just look at each other and you're like, Here, okay, I'm going to do this thing. Um, I, speaking of what you just said, though, uh, I'm actually working on a collaboration with someone where I'm working on lyrics and, and singing, but we're not in the same room. I mean, he lives here, but it's it's when I can. Yeah. And that's different than we're in a band. We're not right. in a band together. It becomes a yeah. schedule. So, moving on. Let's talk show memories. Now, how long have you guys been a band? Um, well, if not counting COVID, I would say about a year, a year and a half. Right, with COVID, new. two years. <laughs> so we're <laughs> very, like very that new. Modifier. Very new. Um, was it? It was just you, you two guys at start. Well, no, originally it was me with another bandmate who unfortunately couldn't be in the band anymore, mm -hmm. and then it just became me and Randy. So it was a two piece. Okay, uh, but the we way were two guitar players, so. two yeah. guitar players and a drummer. Because no that's, that's what was attracting to the band. Because I was just like, what? Two the mm -hmm. guitar players and, and uh, shout out George. to George. Pretty much like they're yeah. what they have, yeah. And then uh, George just that's like I was just watching him play guitar. And I was like, what the fuck is this dude doing? <laughs> Not you, the, the other Georgie. But yeah. that's what gave it that just little like. That's right, it's George. Oh, George. Right. Yeah, that was just a little different album. And I was just like, oh, that's pretty cool. And I hate to say, I, I didn't want a bass player because I wanted guitar. 
Yeah. But there's no way we we're going to find another guitar player that had that same thought process like yeah. the other guy. There was just His no way. rhythm was... Yeah, it was just something very different. Unique, yeah. yeah, it, it was, was just... Definitely unique. He did a little bit of bass, a little guitar, and it was just different, and it just made the, the sound different, yeah. you know? Uh, there's a band in town uh, leaving Springfield. Have you ever heard of them? No. For a long time, it was just guy on guitar and drummer, and the guy on guitar was also a singer, and he had... Um, I said BK, sorry, the guy. So BK and Matt, <laughs> BK would be singing, and he had he had built this guitar that the top half was guitar and like the bottom bar was bass, and he oh, was wow. he had the oh. style of playing where he was he was doing it all, and and it was really cool. They, they have a bass hey, player now. Nice. Yeah, yeah, that's strange. Uh, so, yeah, yeah. yeah, they have a bass player now in Brad Bailey, but that was one of those things. You're like, I don't hear a bass. <laughs> yeah, the bass. That, that, that's what people would say when they would hear. So, like, we hear the bass, but there's no bass, right? You know. But um, the, the funny thing with with the band, um, even though Antonio didn't join till later on, if it literally wasn't for this guy, the Hideaway wouldn't exist. I I, I met him pre-band, and and he's like, yeah, I'm in this band called No Keno, and I'm like, oh, real quick, cool. he was my boss. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Putting it out there. Okay. Okay. So he was my boss. boss. Okay. Yeah, and then this guy's like, "Hey, have you met Antonio? He's, you know, he's into rockabilly and psychabilly like you. He has a hair and tattoos." And we kept missing each other. And then one day at the time clock, it's where I saw him. Yeah. And he's like, "You're George?" I'm like, "Yeah." He's like, "You're Antonio?" He's like, "Yeah." And I'm like, "Hold on, am I getting written up?" Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. let's continue this conversation. We just yeah. hit it up, and and then um, we went to the the Griffin Studios yeah. uh, to re like practice just to see where we were at because I I was interested in, in a bass player. Um, it, it didn't work out at the time. Uh, but then he uh, told Randy about me, and then that's how I met Randy. And then later on, he joined my band, and now here's Antonio in the band as well. <laughs> yeah, just um, the thing is, is to make it you, and to acquire things, you got to work. I mean, there's work, work. So for me, my schedule, two jobs, two bands. So I got to find out how to make that happen. So when in the transition of my work, I could not join them at that time, mm -hmm. but as work, I was able to control my hours better, my days in it, and I was yeah. talking to George, I was like, oh, I'm back in, I'm going uh, to At the time, I think you were working three jobs. I was working three you jobs. You were working three yeah, jobs, yeah. and so, two bands. So. Yeah, I was working two jobs, so yeah. yeah. I have actually had to turn down someone who started making noises about a band, and maybe I'd be a singer and stuff, and I, I approached my wife and child, and they're like, no, <laughs> hard to see as it is, you go in room oh, yeah. six and you disappear, and um, I, miss, I miss it, I, I miss yeah. being on stage, I miss that moment where you step on the distortion pedal or, you know, yeah. I, I miss all that, but, um, you know, like I made, you know, you make choices yeah. you make, yeah. and, um, someday maybe, yeah. um, I have a dream. Yeah. Um, uh, I've talked about this before in other videos, so I apologize if you heard this before, but my goal with this is to support the local Las Vegas music scene and promote Vegas bands. Cause you know, we're, we're terrible at promoting ourselves, <laughs> but also if, if this ever gets funded, like I've got Patreon, patreon.com forward slash room six. I've got a couple albums out for sale. I've, you know, got a room six dot shop for merch. If I could ever, ever get funding coming in, that's going to go to a showcase of all the room six alumni. I'm just going to go down the list five at a time and be like, Hey, can you do a showcase? Cool. I'm going to pay you yeah. and you can set up merch and you're going to play to multiple types of audiences because it's going to be a whole melange, a whole mix of, of bands. So it'll be like you guys, and maybe uh, uh, Outlaw Country, and maybe, you know, a singer-songwriter by themselves, and maybe a metal band, and maybe, you know, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, punk pop. Just an eclectic yeah. mix. Yeah. And that's the idea is, I want to put on showcases and, um, and and actually pay the bands to play. And maybe it's not a whole bunch, but when's the last time you did a showcase where you got paid? Yeah, you know? you have, Or you have to sell tickets, and hopefully you make you sell enough. I don't want, I don't want, I want to say, I want to cut out all the negatives I can. I also want to have ideally a venue, big enough stage to where as much as possible, everybody's stuff is set up so that it's, yeah. it's just like just plug and play. drummer comes in, puts the snare down, you know, just whatever. Uh, maybe they put their, their subs up, but really ideally as m 10 minutes tops in between bands so that boom, 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 boom. Meanwhile, I'll get up and do something original. In that's my that's my my ultimate goal that's is the that's yeah. how I'm gonna get back on stage. But um, that's that's the dream. So if you want to support that dream, please 
There's a link down in the description for all the social media stuff. Link. Please, right. please. Money, please. Money, please. So that leads me to how did the name come about? <laughs> all right, so why'd you name yourself after a venue? So yeah, we named ourselves after a bar and grill. No, I'm just playing. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm a huge Johnny Burnett fan. Johnny okay. Burnett oh, Trio. Okay. So so he has a song Rockabilly Boogie, and in it it says there's a little place at the edge of town, and it's, it's called a Hideaway. So then I was like Hideaway, Hideaway. I'm like that's a good name, and I looked it up. There aren't that many bands, if none, that are the Hideaways. Usually Peggy and the Hideaways mm -hmm. with it's the something Nez, or, yeah. or yeah, a little something in the Hideaways, but never just the Hideaway without you know. So I took the name and. We stuck with it, yeah. All right. And then you found out about the venue. Then I found out. Yeah, no, I knew about the venue, so I was like, well, how can this work? You know, but I'm like, you know what? That's a bar. We're a band. <laughs> you know, if we can collab, that'd be rad. Yeah, the hideaway. Yeah. Tonight, it's us. Right. Um, I, had I known there was a horror movie called Room 6, that's, oh. that apparently has a ton of YouTube videos, <laughs> I, I would not have named it Room 6. I, I saw it when I But my house YouTube. has six rooms, and that's where the guitar wall is. Nice. So I was like, Room 6, it rolls. It's, it's like Dave Grohl said, I never would have named it Foo Fighters if I thought it was going to be anything. <laughs> yeah, but so yeah, we're named after uh, Johnny, Johnny Burnett song, yeah. Which is a lot better than saying, yeah, we like the venue, we like the bar. <laughs> yeah. The chicken wings, that's what got me. Alright, um, I want to talk about uh, show memories, which I mentioned earlier. What's your, how many, you haven't done a lot of shows together just because of COVID, right? No, we've done lots of shows. We, yeah, yeah. We, we, <laughs> I think we have the reputation for the band that's always down and ready to play. Like, we played short notice. We've played everywhere from literally in the... Actually, yeah, we went from playing in, in the desert mm -hmm. at the Dry Lake Bed to playing, um, what, um, Fremont Country Club? Like, we actually, yeah, we played a, a house show the day before, and then we did Fremont Country Club. So we just play everywhere and anywhere. We play with okay. different genres. So, yeah, we're... And that's important for you new musicians as well. When you get to the point where you're like, okay, we're going to start trying to book gigs, be ready at any moment because it's mm -hmm. you're either going to get, all right, well, we'll see what we got. Yeah. And you won't hear, you won't hear, for, won't hear, and then all of a sudden, hey, can you play tomorrow? Oh, yeah. yeah. And you got to be ready. And that's also where jobs and stuff comes in. Yeah, yeah. that's where I totally that's when I, Do yeah. I sleep or do I just <laughs> stay awake? So well, I've done many of them. Yeah. Actually, well, first Friday, we just played first Friday. This is in August right now, I guess. I don't know when it's going to come out. Yeah, time but, recording. But I literally, because I work in Laughlin, I got off of work, literally went home, grabbed my gear, went to Rebar, and we played. But he had to work as soon as we finished. So it's like, I got there, yeah. we played. I, that's why I have his, uh, his uh, bass with me. My gear. We tore down, and he just went to work. So it's like, I came off of work, he yeah. went into work. You know, but Fond memories. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I guess. I remember those days. Yeah, it's fun, especially when someone in the band that works graveyard shift. Oh, on weekends. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. Right on. Um, well, in that case, then, what is your favorite show memory as, a, as, a, as a, being in the band? And it, it could be like it was really, really good, or someone went to jail, or whatever. <laughs> well, I would say that our Fremont Club show was one of the best shows for the fact that um, the sound was amazing. Um, we could it, hear yeah, everything. It's, it's a professional. Yeah, it was job. the sound was great. The hospitality was there with, you know, we've never uh, encountered anything like that. But I would say that show, we were able to play for a lot of friends of now and yesterday. Oh. And I felt that that's probably not going to happen again. You know, to get everybody to meet up like that, sometimes that's the hardest part. Mm -hmm. You know, um, shows come and go. You have the, you know, this, the chemistry we have. We'll have the best show, even if it's for two people or a hundred. Yeah. Because Same even when we're rehearsing, we're having fun, we're joking. No one comes in with, like, all right, let's get this over with. Let's just play. Right. It's no rehearsal. We're still nights. having yeah. fun, so we have fun at rehearsal. We have fun at any show we play. But to get, you know, oh, it's just a twenty-one and over club, or hey, it's a weekend show. It's a Friday. It's a Monday. But it seemed like that show, it just worked out. And while you're playing. And you see out in the crowd and you see the familiar faces mm -hmm. and everybody's, you know, smiling and dancing. It, it, it speaks to you, you know, internally. So those are those memories you'll never forget. And as time goes on and you look back and go, wow, maybe at that moment I didn't realize what was happening. 
now I look back and go, I don't know if that's going to happen again. And if it will, that's awesome. But that was a good show to me. You know, those are those one shows that stand out. Nice. You know? Yeah. Anybody else? Uh, with me, it's actually um, coming right out of COVID. We just played a Feed Me Fest, Volume 1. So Dream what, Up Studios. What was that? Feed Me Fest. So uh, Dream Up Studios downtown, uh, she's hosting this punk rock show. And this was the first annual one. So we got to play it, but I mean, that was the first show coming right out of COVID. Okay. So just the energy. Yeah, there was this it, like built up. Yes, it's, it's like being a gone for summer vacation and then coming back to school and seeing your friends after so long. Mm-hmm. So it was just that energy was insane. And I remember it was rowdy. We were playing like the mic was falling off and I'm like chasing <laughs> it. Like, oh, that, oh, yeah. yeah. And, and you were just hyping everyone up. So that, that, just yeah, that was a pretty rad show. Too, yeah. Energy so wise. It, it, yeah. It I've been seeing a few shows lately where someone says, you know, on the mic, they're like, this is our first show in 18 months. You know? Yeah. It's and so odd. Like, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. They're, they're, they're jonesing for it. So yeah. how about you? I have two of them. Uh, one of them at uh, Casa Verde when we played with the... Oh, the cops? Yeah, the helicopter came out. <laughs> yeah. Cause that, that just reminded me, same thing. Just... Cops were called on a show? Well, yeah. no, I just had a flight. You know, oh, okay. No, they, they come out. Yeah, they did. They actually. did show up. It's in downtown, you know, Las yeah. Vegas, Casa That's Verde, which uh, Casa does Verde. a lot of uh, underage shows with, you know... Which yeah. you gotta set up a show there, because I still haven't done yeah. it. Yeah, Casa Verde, I would say, is like the best... <clears throat> underground venue right now that yeah, we have. For, but did you get the helicopter spotlight on you as you were singing? No, yes. no, yeah, yeah. yeah so, so we got did it. Did anybody get it on film? Because that's awesome. I think there's a picture. Yeah, there's a picture playing, somewhere. Yeah, because like, come on. Yeah, because yeah, the spaceship is bringing spot, us up. Yeah, people are just jumping around. So we're playing, and, and yeah, we. I see the lights, and I'm like, oh, cool, we got stage lights. Come out of nowhere, like what? And then, <laughs> and then we see a cop just like, hey, and I'm like, oh man, yeah. it's ghetto bird. <laughs> Yeah, that, awesome. that one was, uh, yeah. that was fun just because, like I said, it took me back to, like, wow, this used to happen all the time in California. Just, you know, if it got too late, cops would come and right. helicopter and stuff. And then uh, just the, one of the most recent with uh, our buddies 3LH, the Tiki Time. The Tiki Time that was show. was the same fun. thing. It was just that energy, you know, all the bands, you know, brought it. It was fun. It, it was just a good time. And, and that's what, at the end, I like kind of like how you said it where, like, you know, you want to play music and stuff like that but you know we really do it it's just for fun mm-hmm, yeah. so it's not about you know if it's two people five people like hey can we have fun out of this because that's really the whole point mm-hmm. of it you know once it starts turning into uh you know where you start like a chore like ah, oh, I gotta... you get the dead eyes stare yeah, just, like, just like nah there's a brown eyed girl yeah, <laughs> yeah no, 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 there's no. mustang sally all right <laughs> yeah, no, it's... yeah yeah that, i did i did that for seven years of you know cover band and just four hour shows you're like you got it we gotta fill oh, up the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, they're yeah. dancing. Let's stretch it out. Keep playing. Extended version. Keep Same playing right. Green <laughs> River by CCR. Green <laughs> <laughs> oh, Green, CCR is the best for filling time because yeah. you're just like, all right, here's here's the jam session. All right, mm-hmm. just sit back. As the singer, that was like I just would sing my lines and then step back and just play my rhythm acoustic and yeah. and just be like, let me know when you're done. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah, awesome. Yeah. All right. Um, from favorite show memories, let's talk favorite venues, Vegas venue that whether you've played at or you've just seen shows. Dive bar, man, I love dive bar. Dive bar for me, just because um, when I started playing music, they were always so uh, available to us. You know, mm-hmm. I never tried. I always, you know, you pay dues, you play f- first, you play or last after a big, you know, band that comes through town. So then everybody clears out. Yeah, and you're like, oh, there's still two more bands, right? But the bar keeps it going, the sound, the drinks, right. and that's to me, dive bar has been one of the bars that always lets us uh, come over and just showcase. Right. Which either band, whoever we play, uh, shout out to dive bar, Angie yeah. and Nate, they always take care of us. Oh yeah, um, mm-hmm. they always, um, they always allow bands to uh, be themselves. You know, they don't put yeah. you in. Uh, Hey, we only want to do this. You're never going to hear it. Can you turn it down? It's too loud. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> to me, um, that's been one of the places that we've had uh, many shows and also good times with friends. Yeah. I was amazed, uh, again, talking about like we haven't done a show in forever. Uh, I went to Dive Bar to see, uh, I was talking to, I think you off the camera, about the uh, Glitter Trash and, and Crimson mm-hmm. Riot show and Suburban Resistance played. Glitter Trash was from LA. Uh, Suburban Resistance was supposed to... Um, Headline, which means the last, and they were, they said, "Hey, touring band, why don't you go third? Because you'll play for more people." 
Yeah. And we'll go last. And I was like, that's really fucking cool. And then, uh, but but when they went on stage, almost no one left. And I don't know if it was because, number one, people were just, you know, music hungry. Or number two, it was a punk band, a punk crowd. And they just hang out yeah. all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> or it was because it was Suburban Resistance. But regardless, I remember being surprised because I played, mainly, like you said, you follow some band that just kills it. And then you're you're like oh well we're headlining, and and that just means <laughs> if you're lucky yeah. you're playing to, to two people and two drunks yeah. in the bartender you know. No, that's that's true. Yeah. Um, but the thing with us too is just we don't care for the first, the last, right. whatever. Like we, we just want to play. Mm -hmm. So so when it comes down to you know certain bands would be like oh no we have to go last or we have to, we want to go here for the prime spot. We're just like whatever we don't. And whatever, Davis. Um, yeah. <laughs> honestly, I always enjoyed playing for. I always felt like, okay, there's less people. I can make this show for John, or I can, you know, I can make this show for this guy. And also, it's like, well, it's a paid rehearsal, guys. Let's yeah. have fun. There's no stress because you know there's nobody to care. Um, and on the other hand, there's this mob mentality kind of thing that happens where if there's enough people, they're going to like whatever you do. And, and you're going to get response every single time. And so I, I, I always was on the fence of which one I wanted. But I agree, Dive Bar is not for everyone, yeah. but I agree with you, it's, it's a great venue. Yeah. Uh, how about you guys? Um, oh, it's same thing, like I, Dive Bar has just been so welcoming, as, as mm -hmm. Antonio said, like just everything about that place. And the fact that they've allowed us to grow, like the, the Tiki Time show was at the Dive Bar, mm -hmm. hence that one of the best shows we've played. But also, Rebar has a, a place in my heart because that's where we Rebar. started. That's, that's our. That's show, where yeah. the Hideaway officially started. Mm -hmm. So, the, the stage is wonky as hell. I mean, that's, <laughs> at, at, yeah, at, 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 at Rebar, at, at, at Rebar. Rebar. Okay. Yeah, it's it's just. Awesome. It used Nothing. to be wonky at dive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. But no, it's it's better. So so it just has a special place in my heart. But definitely, dive bar is what's given us that outlet to just grow and just be better what we are. So yeah. nice. Yeah, no, I agree. Dive, uh, but I was gonna say Rebar just because those shows were, they were more you know local showcases. So we're Very, always yeah. uh, right. playing with just a bunch of you know I'm sure bands that you know Gurumpa, you know, mm -hmm. aka now Viaje Naval and Resurrection. That's where we met them too. I've actually confession, I've never been to Rebar. I keep meaning to go, but there's always some other thing where I'm like, I, sh I need to go to this show. I need to go to this yeah. thing. But I, I've been meaning to go to Rebar. Mia culpa, sorry. Uh, so definitely let me know when you guys play there again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it's just the fun. Uh, yeah, just those first, like that first year, like you know, we're yeah, just yeah. doing shows right now. Obviously, I'm gonna say we're we're a little spoiled too, because think about it: the fact that there's so <laughs> many venues now, mm -hmm. and you could be in the scene, and like like right now, you just said, I I'm in the scene, but I've never been there because there's just so much going on. There's towns that we've gone out of. Uh, stayed and played in there's only one venue oh yeah and that's it <laughs> yep. so for us here to be able to pick and choose mm -hmm. at which weekend which time yeah we're a little spoiled now i think also for bands um there's many outlets so there's no excuses for bands out there to say that uh, there's no order plan because there's I, I agree there. never mind house send parties. a message yeah. or a phone call that's yeah, what yeah. i tell same thing everyone just that's say, right yeah. just send a and their message. links are down in the somewhere. description yeah. so if, if you need to get a hold of them oh, yeah. that's how <laughs> Uh, all right, so from favorite venue, let's talk gear. We'll start with the drummer. That's <laughs> gear wars. Uh, what are you currently rocking on stage right now? Uh, I play a Ludwig, mm -hmm. uh, entry level one. You know, that I've changed. I think I started off with the export when I first met George, yeah. and then I had another one, and then that one, the Ludwig. Is uh, it all Ludwig, or is the snare different? Uh, actually, I have a pork pie snare. See, the snare's always different. Yeah. Yeah. So, pork pie snare, thanks to uh, Sean, because uh, once I started playing that, I was just like, hey, I guess I do like that, because I always oh, went yeah. for the Dave Girl pork pie snare got some snap. sound, yeah. but the pork pie has that snap, and I was like, hey, you know what, this works. Um, cymbals, um, I'm using the uh, Zildjian A's stuff, uh, same thing, thanks to Sean. I'm upgrading my kit little by little. Did we like talk that. about Sean? Ah, uh, no, he's a, another drummer. Oh, okay. Um, oh, but so yeah, do, no, do you uh, want to give him a shout-out? Uh, yeah. Another band, yeah. Shout-out, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, eventually, uh, I haven't decided. That's why I haven't pulled the trigger on what kind of drum kit. That's why i, I just been buying used ones. I right, customize right. it, so I find, like, all right, I want to go this route. Uh, definitely that pork pike snare, I'm staying with that. Just the, the rest of the shells, I'm not sure what. But right 
I'm currently on an electronic one because it's in the house, mm -hmm. and I, you know, live with people, and I can plug, head, <laughs> I can plug a headphone in. Strangers. Yes, I live with strange people. people. It's very strange people. But uh, I have yet to enjoy an acoustic set, and I want one, but I don't have a reason for one, other than to have one. Like that's the yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah, if I found different. myself in a band again, and for some reason they wanted a, me as a drummer. Well, I well, it it is. Drum yeah. I used to have. So when I, you know, I was a drummer, I sold my drum set. And then I bought an electronic one, same thing, just yeah. to play in the house and stuff. They weren't bad. Oh, you, know, no. you have to go up to the higher end, but where I'm at skill wise, I, it's not that. Where it's I'm just... at skill wise, I'm still having trouble oh, okay. above so, 120 beats per minute. Okay. okay, okay. <laughs> when we're talking paradiddles or something, I, I really like. I, I have a video of uh, uh, Tommy Igo. I don't know if you know the name. Uh -huh. It's basically he assumes a lot. He says, "All right, let's start at 150. <laughs> right, let's ramp it up to 200." Like, Fucker, come on! I'm like. See, so so I, I played in junior high, I played drums, like in the drum line and stuff, but mm -hmm. same thing, you know, like for my drumming, I was like, I just copied like Ramones, TSOL, right. because they had those fast 16s, you know, minor threads, so right. like those were my original like drum things, and that you have to have fast hands, fast feet, period, mm -hmm. but it was basic music, well, to some that can see it, but it's just like, well, no, if you can't play this fast, you can't do it. Yeah. My weakness is my kick drum. Uh, I'll be honest, and my, my current bane of my existence is uh, Monkey Wrench by Foo Fighters. It's, it's, like, <laughs> okay. you know, it's like 172, I think, is per minute, and, it's, and that kick drum is just like boom, 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 boom. And you're just like, God damn it, it's a single, it's not a double kick. <laughs> so I'm, I'm working on it, but eh. Uh, is that it for gear? Yeah. You, you play whatever sticks you find? or you know? uh, Sticks, I'm using 5As. I know. Uh, but yeah, I go for the cheaper time. one. Actually, I've gotten better at not yeah. breaking my stick, so... <clears throat> you have to wear goggles. <laughs> it's just getting more comfortable, but it, it, it depends on the venue and yeah. if I'm hyped up or not, you know? You ever been so, hit in the back of the leg by a broken stick? No, but I, I've been <laughs> I have playing and I, I see the tip just <laughs> fly on the yeah. Yeah. Monkey so, arms. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Definitely um, upgrading to the uh, more fancier symbols is... I have to be a little bit more careful, so it's right. calming down a little bit. That's the other thing with an electronic kit is I don't worry about breaking them. <coughs> I just have yeah. to put, bring them back up after I smack them. Uh, yeah. How about you guys, uh, Gear? Um, I, I guess I'll go next. Okay. Uh, well, real quick, like hands down, I would say Randy is one of the best drummers in town. If, if you have hey, a bold claim, <laughs> no, 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 I no. swear every time Take we that play, back. <laughs> every time we play shows, everyone's just like damn like this guy's good especially when you're watching from the side of the stage mm -hmm. and you see exactly what he's doing and you're just not seeing this but you see his whole body moving mm -hmm. well it's... let me say because you're learning drums so like you know like the beats were man i never pay attention to that, it's like that it's, whole... right it's what you can come out from what the bass player and the guitar player is mm -hmm. so you know yes i know many guitar players that can play you led zeppelin songs or god knows what which is great but in my head it's like can you play an original song? Can you, you know? Yeah. So when I'm sitting down and I'm listening to George this, like I know I can always go into just your basic rockabilly beat or surf and make it work and it'll be fine. But just for me, it's just like, no, I want to see like, yep. let me hit this over here. Let me hit this over here. Let me stutter. Let me stop. Let me pause it. Right. Let me speed yeah. it up. Let me slow it down. Let me do. And that's He's very the approach that I, that I always go for it. So. It's not that's about, I don't have the yeah. techniques for sure, nowhere near any drummer, so I'm taking that clean back, no, okay. but watch the end of Carolina. Like I said, it's it's just playing movie. like on, on the certain, on the mm -hmm. songs, and, and like Carolina, right? Like yeah. that's a straight basic song, right? but it's just like, hey. See, I can hold my own, like say uh, I put on a song I want to play to, I can, I can do it, I might not do it right, mm -hmm. but I can do it, and if, if I'm playing with, you know, uh, if I was if I was playing with a band, I could hold my own until I start thinking. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, "Hey, you know, I, sh I should do a fill or I should do something like that," and I'll do it, and then I'll realize that wasn't what I wanted to do. <laughs> I'm on the wrong hand. Or well, something. had you never done it, right? Exactly, never, and, and, and that's the part that, it's, well, and that's what like I like to say. That's you know what it boils down to: make music, not excuses. Mm, not that's uh, yeah, and I, 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 I need to just keep keep making music and. and It'll, it'll, it'll happen. And, and the best compliment, you know, yeah, I, I get it too all the time. Every time you play, yeah, it's bad. <laughs> but I've gotten a few where people are like, hey, that was pretty creative. Like how you were, mm -hmm. you just changed that up, like on the song and stuff like that. And that happened just at Rebar. Uh, oh, uh, shit, what's yeah. the name? 
a friend. It's oh, awesome. Yeah, he was just like, he's like, you know, he's not a musician, is he, right? He is. Oh, even better. There you yeah. go. So he was just like, hey, that was some crazy shit you were doing. Like, you're putting in some work just like based on the music, mm-hmm. right? It's just like, wow, you're putting in some work. You're just not, you know? So that was more of a compliment to me as opposed oh, yeah. to like, wow, that's that. I was just, because he mentioned that creative aspect. And it was just, and I found it, you know, from like, uh, Elias from The Red Seduction too. Mm-hmm. It's just like, hey, dude, that's pretty creative on the, you know? And and that's the part, right? Making music right there where I don't want to just get stuck in one little thing. And, and same thing to elevate our music, just a little bit different, just by those little different elements and stuff like that. Whether it be dynamics, like I said, pause it, stop it, you know? Hold the symbol, whatever. Right. Those are all the, just those little things that I like to use for myself, and it's just moving around the whole kit, you know. And sometimes, with some songs, just, just keeping it nice and simple, which also works, you know. But, nice. Back to you. Uh, <laughs> yeah, sorry. Uh, well, with me, like all I play are Telecasters. That's all I play. Um, I do like other guitars and other brands, <laughs> uh, but when I do put them on, people say it just looks weird. And but I love it. <laughs> yeah, it's like we. Well, it's like out of place. Look, there's yeah. one over there. It's like a, a Gretsch or something. Rickenbacker. Uh, Rickenbacker. Oh, Rickenbacker, yeah. which would be weird for you to put on. Yeah. So so a lot of people would just I guess identify me with Telecasters, but that's my first love. I mean, it's mm-hmm. just such a war first. It's it's simple. I mean, you could break the neck, just snap on a new one, <laughs> rip out the pickups, put another one. So my main guitar, uh, her name's Val. And it's actually a Fender modern player, but it's completely modded. Like everything is not original anymore. Mm. So that's my main guitar. Then I have other guitars that I would bring out for specific shows or if I want a different sound for that night. Do you have like a line of guitars on stage and you, you change them through various songs? No, no. I, Good. All I have is just <laughs> one guitar. Don't be that guy. Sometimes mm-hmm. I forget to tune through the entire thing. And I'm like, oh man. But I play uh, Diodario 11s. So they're pretty heavy yeah, strings. They're forgiving. So yeah, yeah they, they stay pretty well in tune, even though I, I beat up the strings. Because I go through guitar picks like yeah. nothing. I think I play maybe, well, like three through the show, like a 30 minute, 40 minute show. Like I'll play, it's gone. I'll throw it away, get another one. And uh, so do you don't have a particular type of pick then? You just go for whatever is cheapest? Um, I, I, I actually play <laughs> Fender Heavies. That's what I play. But then I file them. Actually, no, I don't have one. I file them to a point. So so I get the standard, what, 351 shape, the basic shape. Mm-hmm. But then I file them pointy. That way I'm able to just glide quicker and faster because of some of the things we play. Like when we do like Carolina or Surfier Licks, it's just easier to just glide right through Is them. that the trick for that? Well, that's my trick. And, mm-hmm. and the way I got into it, because uh, jazz players, they have pointy picks, but they're small. And that's how they get that speed. Oh. Uh, same thing with metal. You, you put it at an angle. But I don't like that the picks are small. My hands get sweaty. and oh, so, yeah. so I play bigger picks. So I just file them because they don't exist. They don't make them. So I have to make my own picks. Pick manufacturers and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what about pedals? Pedals, I actually just play cheap pedals nothing wrong with that no no i get them from amazon or wish.com and the reason yeah. is because like like how we said like we'll play a show literally on dirt then play a show at a <laughs> venue so i want something that if i break i'm not gonna be upset about and i mean they they last long i mean what i have my setup is um kubabi reverb and lay uh then i have a uh, tone line mod pedals and overdrive pedals but that's it i mean mostly my sound is just me i play very clean Mm -hmm. like all the sound is just the amp and then if i'm going to do a lead or a solo then then i hit an overdrive pedal or a boost pedal but other than that what you hear is 100 percent me did you make that that pedal board out there it's like wood oh that's his i I helped him fix mine's is a little suitcase this little suitcase and i just pop it open and plug in noise yeah. Alright, well I guess we'll move on to you then. What are you rocking? Well, like I had mentioned, I learned on the upright. So to me, that was my my beginning to music for a bass. But when I met George, I started playing, I had played just like an Ibanez, big heavy bass. I didn't know much of it. But then when I wanted to really get into playing electric bass, I just went with the, couldn't go wrong with the good old P bass, you know, just good old P bass. Yep. What strings did we put on? You got flat ones. I got flat ones. You got 52 this flat ones. This is my tech, so. Sorry. I, 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 what am I doing? I, I actually uh, do yeah. help people, like, uh, 
the Sons. I, I've modded one of his guitars, uh, Colton from The Escaper. In the Solid Sons? Uh, Alan from The Sons. It's oh, okay. Rook in Spanish. Yeah, yeah, Spanish. Yeah, yeah. The Solid Sons is a whole other band, oh, yeah. and their bass player, Melted Faces, but go ahead. Yeah, yeah. same thing with uh, Colton from The Escapers. So every time he buys a guitar, he'll bring it to me for specs, and I'll fix it, but it's more of a hobby. It's How's not it? actually... Is your moonlighting? Yeah. Did you put your, your ad out there? Right yeah, yeah, yeah. That's All right. Well, he, uh, he's the one who set me up. Uh, it's regular P-Bass. He found the strings. Um, now, gear-wise, I would say due to now a lot of venues having their own sound system makes mm -hmm. it much easier in a lot of musicians. Mm -hmm. Because I remember playing the good old Double Down. And at the Double yeah. Down, if you want to be heard, you have to bring it. So from bringing huge bass stacks, big 50 pound heads, um, yeah. you know, back breakers, your SVT, A10, your fridge, and then you got your big two Ampeg SVT. Um, those days, unless, I miss those days because as you feel the presence of the big stack on stage, right. they're not needed anymore. Now they're not what it used to be. You're playing shows that they have sound system that you can just bring a pedal. And from your pedal, you got line out and they take care of the sound. Right. So if you just want to have something on stage to get presence, uh, you know, right now I'm going for that P bass. Uh, I was doing that Fender Bassman 135 tube head. Sounds great. But again, it's still 40 pounds, yeah. you know? So um, I'm a Gallon Groovy guy as well. And right now I just acquired a, the latest and the greatest, you know, small little five pound, 800 watt head. You can just pick it up with one hand, your bass, and you just walk right in. The old man model. Yes, because your uh, <laughs> our bodies aren't what they used to be, our uh, backs. I, I was I, talking about uh, merch designs again. I, I made one where there's it's a stick figure and he's bench pressing a half stack and an amp head. It says, I work out because it ain't getting lighter. Correct. Oh, <laughs> yeah. 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 It, it's, I, I'll never forget, a, a ba I, for whatever reason, the bass player needed me to take his stuff to the show. More convenient. Yeah. Well, you know, he was working. He was working. But it was, um, I forget the actual name of the venue inside, but it, it's what became the SLS. And, oh, okay. and the stage was like that high. Oh, wow. Oh. And I, I managed to get his bass rig, boom, up there. But I was, oh, God, I'll never forget the way to that. So, yeah, uh, kudos to bass players because that's a workout. Uh, Mateo's Underground, Boulder City. It's a bass yes. so I, now I played there once, yes. So now you're taking your gear, you're like, all right, I step need two people because they're steps. Yeah. Uh, and we got to go back up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'll, I always appreciate a place that has a ramp on the stage. Oh, yeah. um, that's assuming you have wheels, of course. But, uh, all right, so from gear. I want to talk dream gear. Is there one piece of dream gear that you're just like lusting after? You never, that you want? Oh, God. I, I don't know. Um, or you I would say just the freaking $150 symbol stands. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, one day I'll go up to those, but yeah, drum wise, I'm still trying to see which kind of kit I want, you know, but. Yeah, oh, really? Okay. Really, yeah. You guys are happy with what you, you got? No, what, what I would want, and I... Um, well, you, you just change yours anyway. <laughs> yeah. Right. No, but the thing is, obviously, a Telecaster, they, they started it officially in 1952 with the name Telecaster. Mm -hmm. Those are super expensive, but in 1982, the year I was born, uh, they came out with a 30-year anniversary uh, remake of it. Mm -hmm. But those are really hard to find you'll get an 81 you'll get an 84 and 83 but an 82 because of the anniversary model they're hard but i want that guitar because it's as old as me it's been around as me so i just yeah. want something that <laughs> you got that, that, I that need to, yeah. yeah i just want to take care of it just like all right we, we got the show come on buddy let's do this you know and just like yeah. hopefully it makes it through the show just like i do you know so yeah all right how about you I'm happy with uh, with my P bass, the sound, the way that it feels, the neck, the way. Yeah. Uh, so maybe something cool, something with meaning, like something. Uh, I like that the design and the look of the old Tele basses. Mm. But uh, hey, to, you could match him. Yeah, <laughs> but to to pick up a vintage Tele bass right now, those are pricey. Those are yes. pricey. So, and the thing about it too, when you start dealing with a lot of vintage gear or something, to say, hey, that was on a road with this band or so forth, they become delicate too, because you don't want to break them. That right. being said, we do shows, we're jumping around, we're uh, lugging gear, throwing stuff in the back of the car, 
and then you don't want to get your heart broken and just spend all that money on it. Right. So yeah. to me, I'm, I st- I'm still sticking with that with that Fender line because I'm used to it now. The way that the neck feels. Um, maybe something cool, something with a good look, something that means something for him, his age. The, you know, for <laughs> hey, me, I'm 10 years older than him. For me, <laughs> that could be something like that or a meaningful uh, look or something. But yeah, I would say that would be, as far as like gear-wise, I mean, I'm there. Uh, yeah, I was gonna say that, like, gear, I'm there. Pedals, <laughs> pedals makes things happen. Yeah. Uh, you know, unless it's Wayne's World and I'm she goes <laughs> mine. Right now, yeah, yeah. We're, we're there. We're pretty much right there. On. Yeah. Um, the best answer to that I got from somebody, I can't remember who at the top right now, was a roadie. Nice. There you go. That's my dream is to have a roadie. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Set it up. There you go. Walk right on stage. That's right. Um, from the highs of dream gear to the lows of losing gear, you ever lose a piece of gear at a show or something? Never. <laughs> um, I haven't lost gear, but I did have my amp die on stage twice. Then they're done that. So, so I had this uh, Fender FM212, and I bought it from this dude, and I paid, I paid like 80 bucks. I mean, but it worked. Yeah, I mean, but then like it just died, like it, it overheated or something. Um, but then I luckily picked up his amp, the Fender uh, Deluxe, and that was my dream amp. So I was like, so I'm pretty happy with what I got. But yeah, that's the only story so, I so have. No one's left any gear in a show or. You know what? Uh, guitar I've, straps. I've heard other bands do oh, shit. And I certainly since have. Since I was a kid, yeah. I've always, I'm in the habit of, I do a triple freaking check. I load yeah. up, I'll go back, walk around just because I know a I cable find cost you. 30 That's, bucks. The, yeah, we're, <laughs> we're, hey, we're, we're the, the fucking... Like, yeah, check we're out the, this base guy. We're the ones yeah. that we find you for the fact that, um, yeah, we work, well, we all work, and we work really hard for our gear mm-hmm. because... Um, all our stuff that we have is uh, pricey. <laughs> we worked hard for it. You know, what we have isn't just your run of the mill gear because when I was a kid, I didn't know, so I was playing whatever, and yeah. I know what it is to have stuff that would break down on you and not sound quite right, not as strong, or just wasn't the right gear. Right. Now I feel that I'm <laughs> mature enough to say, okay, no, I'm buying real equipment. So now when I'm show, not only do I break it down myself, yep. I have people, let me help you. I go, no, take yeah, a look here. Drink, right here, drink this beer and sit. Let me touch my own <laughs> See, beer. I'm the guy that offers the help. Yeah, yeah. But that's because I want to talk to you about coming on the show. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no. I'll not only from that, we'll come home and I'll, I wipe cables down. I do inventory. Uh, the only nightmares that I've had is actually waking up thinking, where's one of these bases at? Because with him, I'll send him a random text. Because I've, I've, I've acquired a much gear and I'd, sit and I'd send him a text, hey, is this base at your house? And he would say, uh, yeah, it's in a spare room. Okay. And that's what. So I haven't lost any gear. Nice. Might have misplaced it between my home and his home. And, but that, yeah, that's the one uh, nightmare that I have had. But no, we're pretty uh, we're pretty tight with our gear. Have you lost gear? Because yeah. you're bringing that up. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I'm going to say just sometimes that lost gear is stolen gear. Cause yeah, I, no, I, this I feel was, like every musician, every band that you know, this this was like him saying, oh, "I found something." Yeah. Hooters Casino. Start with that. Band competition. I mean, like a, a battle of the bands. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So not getting paid. <laughs> you know. You may recognize this. Are you ever hear of a, a guitar brand called Tysco? Yes. I had a Tysco sixty-five. Uh, Del Rey in green, and apparently green was the rare color. I work at the pawn shop. I opened it up, and it picture a guitar where there's like this giant spring for the bridge for the whammy, mm-hmm. and a whammy bar that starts like that and goes like that. So you just and it was a zero nut, and I just and I was like, what is that? And even now they're like on sale for like 165 bucks on eBay. So all all the guitars on my guitar wall, room six, are under 200 bucks because. I again. I play bars. I I'm not. I don't have. I don't need a trailer queen. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> but I had this, and I loved it. And it had a the pick guard was a mirror, but it was stripes of cl- mirror and then textured and mirror. Oh, yeah. Nice. So you want to talk about catching stage lights? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Nice. And it was it was it was the heaviest guitar I had, but it was because it was solid, and it was the sound of the the, the suspense, the, the indie rock band I, I sang for. And I just I loved that guitar and. Coming out, I was kind of pissed off about the Battle of the Bands. We, we came in second. 
and we were better than this cover band. <laughs> <laughs> and for whatever reason, I put the case down in the parking lot of the loading area of Hooters. And I loaded up the van and I drove away. And I got oh, home and I said, I really just did that, didn't I? And of course, called and you know, and I was like, well, I know how much it cost me, and and and, uh, and, and I, I tried finding another. I thought I found a high school online later, uh, like years later, and it's it's like short. It's it's not the sure, same. It's thing. Not the same. Yeah. yeah, but it's pretty. Um, so that is a that's one I never take off the wall just because I'm like, ah. <laughs> it's a memory of bad times. I also think I lost a um, a mic stand, hmm. but that was more of it was one of those chaotic gigs where you got 10 minutes to get off stage and get 10 minutes to get on stage and then you get home and you just do an inventory you're like, wait, yeah. I got another mic stand. And you ask people in the band, like, no, no, no. And, I thought you had it. No, I thought you had it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, that reminds me. I did lose um, a guitar strap. So so if you see my guitar <laughs> straps, <laughs> well, they're actually belts. Like, and I cut uh, them in half and I make them into guitar straps. So the, the Tiki Time Show, uh, we played earlier that day with uh, the Escapers, so Colton took my guitar strap, so I brought an extra one, and when we were at the dive bar, I, I put it on the side, uh, just in case he didn't bring uh, it, and I forgot it there, but, yes. I mean, if you, have, if you haven't been to, maybe, it's by the giant there, yeah. clown, so yeah. If you haven't been to the dive bar, all the band's gear is on the side of the stage, just, it's just, boom, you kind of stake out your area. And it's real easy, real easy to, to miss something. Um, and it's dark too, so yeah. yeah. Speaking of guitar straps, on that Tysco, fortunately, I had taken it off uh, and like put it in a cake bag or something. But I had it was a seatbelt. It's an old old style like out of an Oldsmobile. Oh, really? It was an old push button seatbelt, and yeah. that was the guitar strap. And it just looked awesome. But again, that was my that was my sad story. So moving on, we're we're, we're in the home stretch, guys. Um, first of all, I'm going to ask you one of those usual interview questions that we all hate. How would you describe your musical style? <laughs> I knew that was coming. Give me the elevator pitch. <laughs> All right, so yeah, we even have a hard time describing our sound, and it's entertaining watching people come up and say, "Hey, you guys sound like great," and then they go, "But, but. yeah, like we don't like." I think the the, the closest or the, one of the nicest compliments I think is, I think the drummer for Caifanes, uh, the, the tribute band, mm -hmm. uh, he came up and he says, "You guys sound like '50s." But with balls, <laughs> and, I, and I was like, <laughs> "Yeah," and I was yeah. like, "That's probably the best." Because yeah, people say, "There's your tagline, man." <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because I'm, I'm heavily I'm influenced like by, one, yeah, yeah, right, by rockabilly, mm -hmm. um, and then you know surf. But then Antonio brings the whole psychobilly punk, and then right. Randy with this uh, punk drumming. It just became this weird mm. garage thing. So it's it's and, and all of our songs are not the same. So we don't have like the same style. So like. We have a rockabilly song, then we'll go into a bluesy song, and then we'll go into a surfy song, and then we'll go into a love ballad. So our songs are just right. all over the place. Yeah, so it's it's which, hard, which makes it fun to play. Right. It makes it fun to play. You know, um, every song has its own sound, so it doesn't unique. seem like three songs back to back is just one long song. Mm -hmm. It definitely has. We have our own style. To me, blues, rock, and roll. You know, because a lot of it, as a bass player, you're, when he was telling you the songs, everything was in a blues. I'm more of a blues player than anything blues. else. People say you're like a great rockabilly guitar well, player, but I'm like, yeah. what? So much of rock and, and dad rock, 12-bar blues. Yeah, mm -hmm. so much of blues. blues <laughs> I mean, ACDC is a blues band, if you yeah. think about it. And, and they will t call themselves that. I would not consider the blues band. Yeah, because they mm -hmm. say, so like, for us, I mean, the blues, but then if you... Add your distortion, or you add your right. new, like your slap back, or your different little pedals here. Then it gives a different sound. So then people say, "Well, what are you?" Yeah, to me, root. What I'm playing are blues, and from there on, hey, we could we go from there on. There you go. Yeah, yeah. I, I like that with but with balls. That's a good. Song. I like that one. I love that's that. a, yeah. That's what you said. I'm like, okay, that's that, good. I like to go just with you know, garagey with rockabilly influence, yeah. you know? There you but, go. But it's rock and roll under... 50s garage, day. blues, rock, but with balls. Yeah. yeah. There, there you go. Slap it on I'm starting to hone it down. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We have a hard time with that one. But yeah, it's it's entertaining seeing people yeah. come up and saying, 
Yeah, I don't know what you guys are. Yeah. I see uh, the suspense week. It was kind of like that too, but I copped out and I, I I put either original period rock period or I put we're just here to make good music. Yeah, I think I, like I totally just copped out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I should I should put a fifties with boss because ours I think says influences by rockabilly blues uh, and surf I think and you know oh you like, could leave all that and then just put like. But with balls. <laughs> but with balls. <laughs> yeah. Nice. All right. Um, I wanted to talk real briefly about your. How has COVID affected this band in terms of? I mean, obviously, it made it hard to get together and practice, right? But once things loosened up a little bit, how has it affected shows for you? Well, I'm going to say that people. Again, spoiled in Vegas. Venues, 24 hours, a lot of bars. Mm-hmm. Uh, 3, 4 in the morning, you're still having bands going on at the Double Down. Uh, you talk to bands that are out of town that are on tour that, because, man, this place isn't close. It's 2 o'clock and we're at last call, so we have to play Double Down. It's 2 o'clock and there's still three more bands. Yeah. So, Welcome to Vegas, buddy. Yeah, there's so <laughs> many places to play, and I thought people were getting jaded. They just, they, they took it for granted. Ah, we'll right. see you next week. Ah, we'll see this band next week. Yes. Everything got shut down, nothing opened. Then we were all secluded in that bubble and right. when it opened, it was like recess open, last mm-hmm. day of school, everybody went to everything. Yep. Uh, every venue now that has band, uh, hosting bands, I feel that people are more appreciative and say, man, you know, I just can't wait to live music. And then I go, well, where were you? Because now they're, yeah. you they're watching it. it. Let's go. The same set that we did prior to COVID, mm-hmm. now they're watching and they're like, wow, you guys are awesome. What's well, because right. they were just at the bar drinking, too cool to turn around. Gaming, now they're actually, yeah. wow, I want to hear that amp, the bass. I just want that feel just standing next to someone talking, drinking really loud and um, spitting at each other just to hear what they're saying, to <laughs> yeah. hear the band. And I feel that after COVID, people um, were more uh, appreciative. They were, exactly. They were jonesing for it. Yeah. Exactly. Now that's what Because I, I do remember, it, like you literally be, uh, we'll be one block down at this other venue next week. And nobody, this is my bar. I don't want to go to that bar. Yeah. And now, <clears throat> yeah, like you said, and it, we're, already I'm starting to, like, well, like we talked about earlier, it's getting to the point again where like, well, I want to go see all the shows, but I can't. Because now we're getting, again, a whole bunch of shows. Yeah. But, yeah, I agree with you on that. Um, did you have something? Oh, yeah. With the whole COVID shutdown, too. Um, we, I guess, we, we slowed down, but we didn't stop. I mean, I mean, we still communicated. We still played once in a while. We, we practiced. Um, but we also did the, the what well, everyone did, the YouTube or Instagram live stream shows. Live streams, yeah. We did a couple of those. They were pretty fun. Uh, during that time, we also took the opportunity to write uh, new songs, work on our old songs. So we never stopped. So now that we came back, we we're actually better, more aggressive. We have new songs. Uh, just It's like a different band, but in a good way. So we never stopped. We just continue progressing. Uh, I think we finished uh, recording part of our EPs during that time as well. Yeah, okay. so, so yeah, we were still proactive with our time. Yeah. Good. Uh, last question. You made it. Um, let's pretend we're talking to new musicians, okay? Someone comes up to you, says, how do I be like you? Uh, what's one piece of advice that you wish someone would give you when they are starting music? Would have given you? To me, uh, have fun. Yeah. Uh, have, <laughs> have fun, guys. I mean, the thing is this, if you're doing it to show off, so you're doing it to acquire fame or money, um, yeah, it's, it, that's not how it is. To me, I feel if you're having fun, everything else comes with it. Because to me, the best, uh, well, the best thing that I've gained from music, yeah, it's fun to play and it's great, but the friendships, like right now we're solid. This group and with Sean, you know, we are a solid band. You know, we're not only musicians, first and for, foremost, we're friends. And then from there as a musician, then the time on stage, because we could sit down and just hang out and talk for hours. And that's already the fun part. So when it comes to musicians, people that just want to be on stage to make money, to be famous, to impress a girl, I get it. But that only lasts for so long. Mm-hmm. Friendships will last longer. And to me, that is the most important thing. So if you're having fun with your friends, there it is. That's what. That's to me, I feel that's the foundation. Because now you're not mad if, let's say, 
he misses an oath or vice versa. I'm not mad if he can't make this show because he's my friend. I don't see him as a, like a, a coworker, like, dude, I'm not making the show because he's not there. Right. That's what I feel that a lot of musicians that are new should take that into consideration because there's three different, well, for us, it's easier. It's three. But you got bands that got four, five, six, seven people. Uh-huh. One guy doesn't show up. Oh, now the whole band can't play. Now this guy was so looking forward. This musician wanted to play. Yep. And he can't because such and such couldn't make it. And now he's mad. Now he doesn't want to go to practice. But for us, you know, we're having fun. So I, that's the best thing I could tell. Have fun. Because after that, everything follows. I used to front a seven-piece band. Oh, wow. Eventually became a four-piece band. I, I had I had to be a rehearsal Nazi. He's like, guys, I, yes, it's a great song. Yes, we'll get to it, but we have a show. We're, we're supposed to play four hours, and we have three songs. Let's go. Yeah, yeah. And I'm the, I was like the youngest guy in the band. I was like, come on. Um, who, anybody else? Uh, good advice? Um, I guess what I can say is um, it's never too late. You know, sometimes you, you'll be like, oh, I, I can't play because life gets in the way. But trust me, um, someone told me a long time ago, music is ageless. So it's never too late to, to get back into it or to put to the side for the meantime if you have to. But yeah, it's never too late. Yeah. Uh, Huey Lewis in the news. Huey Lewis was discovered playing harmonica busking in like uh, Prague or something oh, wow. at 40. And somehow okay. it, that led to them living in San Francisco and being here with us in the news. But yeah, that all, I always think about that. Uh, Bob Dylan. Yeah. Bob Dylan did it for a long time. And if that ugly son of a bitch, you know, <laughs> but um, what? I agree with you. Uh, personally, I, I, I had to take a hiatus yeah. for, for life and, uh, you know, getting like getting the degree and getting the job and everything so I could afford things. But it, it never, if it's there, you just have to give yourself permission to get back at it yeah. and don't, and do it for you. And don't worry about, you know, oh, but what if we're all going to die? Yeah. Do, yeah. It. do it. You will die. The never ending <laughs> abyss is always encroaching. Oh yeah. It's always there. <laughs> no, uh, you gotta, I agree the same with uh, Antonio. It's gotta be fun. Mm-hmm. You know, if it starts turning into that, you know, and it's cool. Like, Hey, you want to make money out of it? Well, start treating it like a job and practice and yeah. put a lot of de- time and dedication, right? Just like we do with our jobs. It's like, yeah, if you're only practicing one hour, yeah, you're not going to get there. But it's got to be fun. And, and same thing with, you know, George saying that, yeah, you know what? It's ageless and you got time. Uh, the one thing, you know, now being older, um, fuck, that always irritated me. It's just like drummer breaking down on stage, <laughs> which is fine. But it was just like... There's another band coming up, you know. Move to the side. So a little bit more professionalism new, and new respect for you know for following up bands for the whole members. Just right. you know, just that little bit of professionalism. Well, I assume, that, I assume these guys help you with your gear. Oh no, not at all. <laughs> I, I'm quick on my. I got my. You know. Okay. And 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 the thing is, and right, because I'm gonna say right, everybody kind of has that dream, like, oh, I want to get paid. Yeah, no one's going to pay you if you're not professional to a certain extent, yeah. period. Start on time. Yeah, start God, on time. There's nothing worse than going to a show where... You got a 25-minute set. Hey, your set is 25 yeah, minutes. You're affecting yeah. everyone else's set. And, you know, and their no fans. You know how many times you know, there's shows that I do that and I have to yep. explain that like, hey, there's another band. Yeah. I get it. You rocked out. You kicked ass. However, there's still like... 10 more bands coming up. Right. You convinced the soccer moms to come in and watch you at 11 <laughs> and now they got to wait until yeah, 12 30 in the morning. And, and suddenly they're not there and you're like, you should have hung out, man. Yeah. Um, my one piece of advice would be practice at home so that rehearsal is just tightening it up. It, mm-hmm. pr- rehearsal is not for you learning your part. True. No, or, you know, it, or, or figuring your part out. That's We've all had that, right? More like, productive you, practices. You yeah, get yeah. there, and unless you were writing a song right then with each other, that's a whole other thing. And that's lovely when that happens, when it gels, and you're just like, oh, that, that was pretty cool. Yeah, we'll have to work on that. But when you have, we have a show, here's the set list, practice your parts at home so that all you're doing is figuring out the ins and outs, figuring out, okay, how are we going to do this song different than we have done it every single time? All those mm-hmm. little things you do. Oh, yeah, yeah. Practice That way practice is fun. You do the work at home. I mean, I'm sorry, rehearsal is, is fun. You do the work at home, and 
that's the hardest part is, is the self-discipline. Yeah. Oh, real another piece of advice. You, you guys actually touched that. Uh, one of the things that we have, we are professional. We are always on time and we are super friendly and easy going. Um, when it comes to booking venues, that really helps out a lot because yes. how you present yourselves to them and to the crowd is what's going to make them want to bring you back. So so definitely just be professional, on mm -hmm. time, courteous. So just don't be a D-back, as simple as that. Yeah. Nobody cares yeah. who you are. Yeah, and no, <laughs> who cares if you're good at one thing? Everyone's a musician and no one cares. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. All right. Well, um, we can get it together real quick. I just want to say thank you so much for you watching. Stick around. We're going to have a music video, I think. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We're going to have a music video from the guys. Um, if you haven't already, please subscribe, subscribe down there. You know what to do. Ring the bell. That way you can find out when more interviews and more reviews and just all the other videos I put out happen. Again, if you'd like to support the channel, there's links down there, room6.shop, Patreon, all that jazz. If you want to check these guys out online, there's links down there in the doobadoo. -doo. The hideaway. The hideaway. The hideaway. Thank you, guys. I want to thank the hideaway for coming on and for having me over, really. Uh, it was a great interview, and I hope you enjoy the music video coming up. Remember to be amazing. We'll see you next time on Room 6. Say goodbye, guys. Thanks, Bye. guys. Bye. Bye. Ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba.
the bright day sky.